Hey there, my name is Son Goku, and you're listening to the Geek Bacon Podcast. What? What? It, it's not bacon? Geek air? Silly man, you can't eat that. How's it going, and welcome back to another episode of Geek Air Podcast, and with me we have a very special host. Want to introduce yourself, Ben? Hi, I'm Lo-Fi Sane, other known as Lane Harley Rush. I'm a voice actor. Nice. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about some of the geeky stuff. We're going to be talking about some uh, cool stuff and some extremely cringy dubs. Oh, gosh. Because, you know, as a voice actor, you know, speaking about some of the dub history, we've had some great dubs in the past, and we've also had some pretty bad ones. I could agree. (laughs) I hope we're going to be in for a treat. I don't know what you have in store for me. So, I know for, you know, yourself, uh, what's been your favorite role as a voice actor that you've done before? Well, if I could say my favorite role, I'd have to say um, my very first role in uh, Super Dragon Ball Heroes, uh, the fan dub. Uh, that was almost a year ago now where I auditioned for a bunch of characters, Goku, uh, Raditz, Piccolo, the Genyu Force, and then they said, hey, can you try uh, Cumber out? And I was like, okay. Uh, I went and did Cumber, and they were just like, yes, we need you for this. And I was going to start with my Snowball microphone, and oof, ever since then, I honestly met a lot of great people through that, uh, brought my horizons, networked, and gosh, here I am now on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes yeah, so you know we dubbing history has you know it's gone from everything from you know back for as kimba the white lion and speed racer to what what the senate you know we, we've had some good dubs and we've had some pretty god awful dubs uh before no, Kuma, uh... What, what's the worst dub that you've heard in your opinion Mofi? Oh gosh, the worst dub I've ever heard. Um, I would have to say um, Yu-Gi-Oh in the in the first season. Uh, it's either a tie between Yu-Gi-Oh or um, shoot, uh, what other one was it? Um, Digimon. The Digimon. I... Finished yeah. dub is probably the worst dub I've ever come across because it, oh, gosh. it's an official dub and it sounds like it's in a cardboard box. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, I I those are the two things. I love Digimon and I love Yu-Gi-Oh straight to bits, but when it comes to um bad dubs, I feel like they take the cake in their first seasons. They get a little better, but with four kids running them, it, it kind of I don't know. <laughs> it didn't do it well for me. That's where I went to uh, Adult Swim as a little kid and watched Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> uh, everyone remembers, you know, the, the original Toonami ads they had for Dragon Ball when it first came out. Oh, yeah. Late nights watching Adult Swim, Toonami at that hour. I hear Tom. I go, hi, Tom. Ready for Dragon Ball Z. You You got me at DBZ. Thank you. <laughs> Give me my next episode. And then I see yeah, Krillin die, and I'm just like, what? Here in the UK, it was so hyped when uh, Pop first announced that they were going to be sh- sharing Dragon Ball Super. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's probably not the best of cuts. That, that's what I've heard. I heard it. they cut a lot of fight scenes, and that makes me sad because that's Dragon Ball uh, Super feels like a slice of life at times, but... It really do, um, does what it's supposed to do with the fight scenes. Not like they did in Z or Dragon Ball days. Um, Super did its job. Not to the expectations I, I would have for like Battle of Gods or um, Resurrection F. I liked Resurrection and F, of F, even though it really shouldn't have been there. Super losing that for the pop dub. I don't know. It just it makes it hurts me a little bit. Yeah, like they the, the cut out a lot of the things, and even the way they kind of advertise it, it's it, it they make it sound like it's meant for 
pre-K and not an action-packed show. Mm-hmm. That's the that's that's the that that's where I was told that was for. It's on like a kids channel, but I've seen kids channels here in America, and I'm just like, I don't know how it is over over in other countries, but I'm just like, he gets shown a lot of stuff, and it surprised me with how four kids as a kid, like how much they censored it. I'm like, I could just go watch uh, Law and Order uh, <laughs> Special Victims Unit, and I'm here and I see going like semen in the ear canal, huh? And I'm like, what's that, Mom? You're never watching this show again. <laughs> little little five year old me is like, <laughs> what does that mean? You're never watching this show again. But little yeah, show, well, it, it could, could be worse. Could be worse. Uh, my first introduction to uh, ad- adult content was my dad introduced me at the age of six to Spawn, the animated series. Oh, Spawn was great. I love it. I I I can't get enough of Spawn. My, oh, if we're if we want to talk about um the first adult content, I would have to say uh the original animated Berserk. I uh, I grew up with that as a kid. Yeah, same same here. I I really enjoy the show, and then when they have the new the CG thing, it kind of hurts me now. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to get into the CG topic. It is. It feels lazy. It feels like it's being um, it's being thrown at us and be like, "Hey, look, we can pump out anime faster." Yeah, but can you really though? There has been a few good CG anime films. There's one called Asora, which is about this primitive boy, and it's based off of a manga from the 1970s mm-hmm. that came out a few years ago. And that was good because the artwork blended well with it. But with Berserk, they kind of like cut a lot of action movements, like bending of elbows. Mm-hmm. So it looks more like a cutscene from a video game than, you know, an action-packed series. But, uh, yeah, I think the the finished dub of Digimon is probably one of the worst ones I've heard, but not as bad as the Malaysian dub of Dragon Ball Z. I actually never seen the Malaysian dub of Dragon Ball Z. I, I will send you the, uh, a link to it afterwards, but it, it is oh, a official dub that was done by Saban. By Christopher Sabat. No, it, it, they're all, it's Malaysian people trying to speak English. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, like a lot of people compare say that the worst stuff they heard of was the, the dub for the, some of the Dragon Ball Z films that came out over here, the big green dub. I've heard of the big green dub. I just never really wanted to look into it because I really, I get bothered when I hear bad voice acting. It gets me to the point where I'm just like, I don't, I don't know if I want to be here anymore. Yeah, it was a strange thing because it was, it was, it was co-made by Cartoon, it was like Cartoon Network or Toonami and a French crowd and they hired a bunch of Americans that were over in France. Mm Mm-hmm. To dub over stuff that was already dubbed. Hmm. So the Piccolo wasn't Piccolo, he was called Big Green. I have like Big a lot Green. of voice actors that did Code uh Code Lyoko, the cartoon series from the oh, I like Code Lyoko. They were involved in it. Oh gosh. I mean, you gotta start somewhere, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that is true. Well, you know, everything from uh, you you could you could do it as a drinking game. Anytime you hear a cringy line from a dub, you take a shot. 
I remember a friend sending me a, um, a cringy line of freezing going, Oh, I love my balls. I'd wish to caress them so. Or, if you were a dog, I would pet you. If you were a cat, I would scratch your belly. Or something like that. <laughs> I was just like, what the hell are you doing, Frieza? I didn't know you could go to that level of uh, creepiness. Now, please stop it in, uh, while I go watch my um, real good shows. Oh, I just want to touch my balls, my dragon balls. And, you know, with, with that line alone, you can understand why AV Hell has a lot of those We Got Big Balls clips with Dragon Ball Z in it. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, uh, you want to talk about the making like, dragons? Those are the biggest. Yeah, so, we, we, as far as, you know, other sort of cringy dot. Cringy dubs. Uh, I know when it comes to probably some of the Harmony Gold dubs. If you ever heard some of them, I've never heard of Harmony Gold. Are they that bad? Harmony Gold are it's infamous slash famous as like a company. They're very well known for uh, Walker Texas Ranger. Okay. But they Someone dubbed. Familiar. They originally dubbed uh, Dragon Ball when it first came out, oh. and they ch- Goku is no longer called Goku. What is he He's called? Called Zero. Zero. Yeah. You know we were getting Mega Man X in this. Uh yeah, I, I don't know why they they decided to change his name. Uh. What was it? Uh, and yeah, I think they only dubbed really about nine episodes. It was like the first attempt to try to bring Dragon Ball over to the West. And it's just it was god awful. It's a weird sort of experiment because they're kind of imp- because they destroyed uh Macross and all those series when they first came out, and they made Robotech as a result. Yeah, no, I remember Robotech. But if we didn't have all that, um, all those random like dubs coming over to us and uh, trying to appeal to us, we wouldn't have Dragon Ball Z today at this current point in time. I feel like we'd have Dragon Ball being the JoJo of everything. Yeah, it just would have been a- the very niche fandom. That's a Dragon Ball reference, is it? <laughs> like how they do with JoJo references. But you know what? If we could do it all over again, honestly, I would have loved to have JoJo be um, be the Dragon Ball. Yeah, that that would be quite interesting. Although, I, I, I'm I think... a Dragon Ball fan. I, 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 I feel like it's weird to say, but... Underrated anime such as Baki the Grappler, Berserk, um, well, underrated series, Baki the Grappler, Berserk, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I feel like they really got hit. They got hit hard with the more famous like Naruto, Bleach, DBZ. I love DBZ. It's it, I feel like DBZ is better out of the three, even though I like Bleach a lot. Um, and now we just got more animes coming out. JoJo's rising to the tops now, but I. Uh, Gosh, with all the new stuff coming out, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just going to stick to the old school and <laughs> and not really move around. It took a while for JoJo to sort of pick up any steam. You know, originally when the first OIV came out, uh, it's like oh, when they were gosh, advertising yeah. the probably oh, yeah. one of the biggest sort of uh, missing media items is that first JoJo film that they tried to release. I was supposed to be Phantom Blood. Where they didn't have the ever interfering speed wagon. Yeah, it was so bad the creator himself of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure walked out of the cinema and never came back. Hirohiko Rocky. <laughs> he likes a lot of things. That was not one of them. Yeah. I think there's only maybe like eight people in existence that have the full film. Oh my gosh. Well, they can sell it for a lot of money. Um, yeah, you see, when I watched, I, I actually watched OVA as a kid, and I liked it a lot. Um, uh, the Stardust Crusaders. Um, oh yeah, the original without, OVA that was just—it was fantastic. 
Mm-hmm. Dave Productions really uh, hit it hard. They like they hit a home run with uh, Phantom Blood when they started that. True, but the Stardust Crusaders OAV, the the best scene in it has to be with uh, Darby. <laughs> Do you understand, Mister Joel Star? Every second he blinks, jo- uh, Jotaro has a either a cocktail or a cigarette. <laughs> Yeah, that was honestly my favorite part. I'm just waiting. Like if that if that scene went on any bit longer, like he'd be you know doing his, you know doing Darby's girlfriend in a second. It's like how the hell did she appear? Look down, da- look back to your cards. Now back to me. I have a cigarette in my, in my mouth. Now look back down at your cards. Now back to me. I'm banging your girlfriend. What can you do about it? Yeah. But uh, no, like watchings of uh, that sort of brings me back with uh, terrible dubs. Uh, Central Park Media is the dubs are so bad. Some of them are actually fantastic. They've done some great work with like Slayers. The the original Slayers work was fantastic with Veronica Taylor and Eric Bale and all of them. I've never heard of, heard of Slayers. If you like D and D, and we are going to bring up D and D, it's pretty oh. much D. It's D and D and anime. Oh gosh. Uh, are you wait? Are you talking about Goblin Slayer or no? No, it's it's called Slayers. Okay, because I've heard of Goblin Slayer, and I will not touch that. I have seen all of Goblin Slayer. It is it's a pretty good show, but it's it's uh. Rapey. Pretty much your most, uh, it's like someone's first campaign in D&D. <laughs> pretty, pretty much what it is. Because you have the one character, and he's just like, all right, this is my mission. You know, Goblin Slayer's main goal is to kill goblins. I kill raping goblins all the time. <sighs> yeah, and it's, you know... It was good for what it was. I thought it was it was an entertaining show. I don't think it would would have been, you know, it's not thought provoking. It's going to be forgotten about probably by next year. Oh my gosh! Right? Oh, I'm very picky when it comes. Like people are like, "Oh, hey, my Hero Academia." I'm like, "No, I'll give it a shot." And when I gave it a shot, I liked it. And then people are like, "Oh, hey, One Punch Man." And I gave it a shot. I semi like it. And people are like, hey, watch Mob Psycho. I hate it. <laughs> and people are like, why? I'm like, I am not a, I don't know. And then they go, you like that crap Super, though, Dragon Ball Super, though? I'm like, don't you talk crap about my crap. <laughs> well, that, that, that's you know, the, the biggest, you know, online argument when it comes to anime. You know, your waifu is trash. My waifu is better than yours. Well, honestly, I... I I can't relate to that argument because I'm married to my wife, and that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married to my wife, and so and everyone's like, "My wife, who? My wife, who?" I'm like, "Ah, uh, um, yay, cool character. They look really nice, but look at that body, though." But I'm like, "But look, I got a girl with a good body, and I could go to bed with that tonight." <laughs> And respect her. I can touch her. And everyone's like, oh, I got my body pillows. Oh, man, I draw her all the time. And I'm like, oh, that's good for you. I like to touch I like to touch my wife. I like to be able to hold or kiss her and be like, hey, how's it going? I don't know where I went with that. I, I, at the end of the day, like, we're all kind of anime fans. And I think, you know, this my anime is better than yours or your waifu is trash. Oh gosh, I it's all kind of done in this giant joke. Now I think at this point, it is a joke at this point. I I I really love being in the the anime fandom, but I also don't consider myself an a big anime fan. I feel like I'm an old school fan because I don't watch anything. People are like, um, I want to eat your pancreas or free or some weird name I can't pronounce in Japanese, and I'm just like, what? It's a great anime. I'll just watch my Dragon Ball Z again. Bye. 
<laughs> You're never going to get uh, diversity with just that. I don't care. Uh, that's that's definitely true. But uh, what shows are you currently watching at the moment yourself? Oh my gosh. Um, I'm not really watching it. I'm watching Super with my uh, wife. Um, we kind of go off and on, on with it. Um, she's watching Critical Role, the D&D podcast. Um, and honestly, I'm not really watching anything. I plan to watch uh, the second season of Castlevania. I know it's been a long time since it's been released, but I just, I don't know. I take forever to watch shows because I don't really prioritize watching TV or, telev- or television shows, anime or whatever as much as I do like networking, voice acting, and playing some games or talking to some pe- people. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, so, you, you know, you're into D&D. What are your biggest sort of inspirations when you're creating your D&D? Oh, gosh. When I'm having a big D- What can annoy the DM most? Um, that's my idea. Um, I rarely pe- play characters who are sane. Um, if you see me playing a sane character, um, they're not going to be sane for long. Um, in one camp, uh, one campaign, I based this one character off of pissing the DM really bad. I named him No One, and it didn't piss him off. He loved it. So then I was like, okay, first ex- experience. Oh, hey, you got a a, a a dwarf looking at you. She she kind of fancies you. And I'm like, I'm chewing my food I got from uh, got from the cafeteria in the ship like from the from the cook and i'm just kind of eating in slop i'm shoving food in my mouth i just open my open mouth chewing oh yeah she still likes you I, i'm like okay this this dwarf is weird so i have my character just open his tongue out and spit everything back out and just look at her and be like hey sexy <laughs> and then i got then she just walks off he eats the food that he spat back up goes out feels sick he goes okay i'm gonna puke overboard I, pu- I roll. I'm like, hey, do I puke on anybody that's popping their head out of a window or whatever from the ship? And he was like, uh, roll me something. Nat 20. I puked in someone's head. That someone was the co-captain. And that person was our leader in the party. Um, then after that, our ship got attacked. Uh, everyone's uh, fighting. I got shot in the arm. I'm like, I don't fucking care. You, you whelps can't hurt me. I'm no one. And then they shoot me in the other arm. I'm like, okay, this is getting fucking redundant. It's the other arm. Can you at least go for the leg so I can just scream at each leg, you know, because it's a reference of something that I don't know about. Oh, and then they shot him in the gut. It's like, okay, this is a little too far. You shot me in the gut. I eat there. And so he um, jumped. He um, ran up to the highest crate. And I told my DM what I was doing and what I was going to do. And I told him I was going to try to take a small running start, jump off the boxes dual front flip and use my giant broadsword to f- use the weight to um fling myself to the other ship he's like okay you're growing uh since you described it to me really well because uh at the time i described it well um he goes okay ra- roll me that with advantage with your strength because you're you you're using a lot of your strength and you got a high in your strength and i'm like okay cool and i rolled two nat 20s i was mad because i wanted to roll a one i really wanted to, uh low rolls because i wanted to fuck up <laughs> and so i i kill this guy and he's like do you want to do anything as you're flinging i go i'm yelling oogala 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 <laughs> everyone around me is just like stunned like the dm was just like yeah everyone's stunned players everyone they see this weird tiefling with giant fur coat flying in the air with a um <laughs> with his broadsword fl- uh coming towards this one guy just wide eyed just screaming oogala 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 stabs him but before he got to the point I'm like hey can i do something before, while i'm going towards he's like yeah i'm like i want to slide my hand across the blade and enact my um my blood map my enchantment to uh cause my sword to be all electrified he's like okay um you could do that yeah i'll allow that uh since you're in midair and i'm like okay cool i do that and i get extra lightning damage he's like okay rolled a hit i rolled a lot of high numbers killed him in one shot and he's like okay how do you want to do this like and i'm just like okay I'm going to pin him to the ground, stare at him, still screaming, oogala, 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 and just then pull the sword out with him, still attached to it, and swipe up, and it gets stuck in his chest. His head starts fizzing from the electricity, shaking back and forth, foaming from the mouth, and about to explode. I'm like, oh, you're not fucking exploding here, and I just whip him around up in the air, slice the red uh, uh, 
the rest of his body up from his head, cut his head clean in half, and then an explosion of blood over every myself, everybody around me, my team hit the the enemy team, and everyone's just staring at me, arrow in my stomach, arrow in both my arms, just screaming, Oogala, 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 motherfuckers. And that scared. He says, roll intimidation. I roll a high intimidation. One guy jumps off the ship. One guy tries to attack me, but he gets mauled by the um, dwar- uh, mauled by the uh, druid who turns themselves into a spider. That's my, uh, that's my best story. How did that campaign go? How did that campaign go? It's still yeah. going. <laughs> I attacked a barkeep who wouldn't give me salt, so um, I almost killed him until my team pulled me away. I almost chopped his head off. I chopped. I I I, I damaged him pretty bad. And my DM said, "Yeah, now you have a cult after you." I'm like, "What?" Yeah, he was part of the Red Dragon cult. I'm like, "Oh, great, cool. Hope my party loves me this time." He's like, "Oh, I love it." And my party's like, "Yeah, we love it too." I'm like, "Why do you love it? Hate me? Hate this character?" One person's like, "I want my character to be with this character." I'm like, "He hates you." <laughs> Him. stop loving my horrible poorly like mannered character he would if you actually got him to bed he'd look at you and be like well now i guess we're gonna have to start the bananaing and just hold up a banana with some kind of gooey substance on it and just be like i'm going to hate fuck the shit out of your asshole and yet they still love it and i'm like why I made the worst character. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, at, least, you know, at least your character hasn't died yet. Oh, he hasn't died. He's been close to it, but people keep healing him. They're like, he can't die. No one can't die. I'm like, stop protecting him. He will throw you in danger. I have thrown them in danger. And I feel like their bias towards liking him have just... Ah... He's punched one of my teammates in the throat. He got my DM was like, "Yeah, you were uh, since you couldn't join the last campaign, you were asleep for five days." I wake up. Got someone's poking me to see if I'm waking up. I punch him right in the jugular with one knuckle out. So I'm like, and they're like, ah, ah. I'm like, "Fuck you!" And I just feel like it's like, "You're welcome." And I'm just thinking, uh, I just hear you saying, "I love you, no one." And I'm like, "I hate you all. Stop loving me." Oh. Uh- Better than, you know, so no one hates you. That means everyone likes you. Oh, yeah. No, it's the opposite of what I wanted. I wanted an absolutely hateable character, and it just did not work for me. It's like how I love rolling low numbers. I love rolling ones, fives, twos, whatever, anything below a 10. I love rolling because it just makes more, uh, for a better game. And I'm rolling 16s, 18s, 19s, 20s, and I'm like, why? Why? Where do you get the, your inspiration for your character? Um, no one came from um, Trevor Belmont. Uh, when you first see him, he's a drunk and he's just kind of like fucking around and he's just taking punch. He's acts all tough, but he's getting really beat to shit because he's drunk. Um, it came from him and I really wanted, I made him loud because I really wanted to uh, originally give him the, I'm Mr. Satan voice. Hey. I'm no one, and I'm a, I'm the best of all around. <laughs> but I, then I was like, you know, I'm just going to go for a uh, a very annoyed British person. So I mean, you think, fuck off. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, so as far as your your you know your, your voice acting experience, what's what characters would you like to actually perform yourself in the future? Um, gosh, I've been trying to plan a, um, I found this system for, uh, Dragon Ball Tabletop, a D10 system, and it's actually really good. It works off of the White Wolf system and, uh, the battle systems off MOOCs, and I really wanted to play a, um, Dragon Ball themed game. I wanted to, I want to plan to do a live one, one of these days, but I really, I don't have the people who are interested. I can't DM personally because I honestly, I I can't plan that far ahead. Um, And if I were to play a new character, I honestly play either a Saiyan or a, um, or a demon character because the system allows you to make a demon and just kind of play a calmer, more silent character because I'm used to being the loud. um, I'm going to, um, 
be the one to interrupt you guys. Just that's because my character is like that. Yeah, so you know, more of a uh, a Tarble than say a Vegeta. Um, no, more of a Vegeta, but quieter. A Vegeta and a Piccolo mix, like someone just that's really quiet. I have a character who I'd love to uh, use for if I was going to use him. If um, if I were to play, he's a Sa- he's a full blood Saiyan, and he's um just quiet, quiet and ang- quiet, mostly angry, but. He's he's workable, and if I was going to use another saying, he's very peppy. He's happy, but he likes to um, show it through a- his action, not through talking. Because he's uh, he's a saying. He's all he's all action, not talk. Yeah, that that's, that sounds great. But uh, so because you're you're an old school anime fan, have you heard the news about Akira uh, Akira's being readapted again? I heard about that, and I actually never really watched Akira. Um, I watched the original Fist of the North Star movie, uh, which was okay. Um, that yeah, no, that dub was really bad. Um, but I like it. I do, but um, I've heard a lot of good things about Akira, but I need to actually sit down and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets so surprised when I say I've never watched Evangelion. I've never watched Akira. Um, I watched Ghost in the Shell like once, and I don't remember it that much. <laughs> I am the worst anime fan. Like, holy crap. I bet you remember everything about Dragon Ball. Oh, gosh. I remember little to do in Dragon Ball. I need to actually rewatch it. I know a lot from Z. Um, Super is what I know. And I, I I, love GT. GT is my favorite. Like, I don't care what anyone says. You can call me a, a lot of names under the sun. Like, I love GT. <laughs> Not as much as I love Raditz, though. But I love GT. Yeah, G- GT, I-, I thought was a great series because it is kind of trying to combine Dragon Ball Z and GT together. Mm-hmm. And I like the whole idea of the, the negative use of the Dragon Balls. Mm-hmm. So essentially, love- Dragon Balls become your villain. That surprises me because if King Piccolo really wanted to, he could have just fucked everyone up. <laughs> Yeah. Went to wish off of it, go to a new planet, and be like, "Goodbye, everyone. You're all weak. <laughs> You're too much to deal with. I'll go after a planet that's easily t- uh, take control of or whatever." Yeah, that, that's true. You know, well, there, there is that planet that Goku visited that he got his instant transmission. Planet Yardra. Oh man. There's so much. I, I read. I actually recently just read a uh, fan manga about how Goku's training was on Yardrat, and it was really fun. Um, it ended up being the Future Trunks timeline, but I know that's pretty good. Um, so you asked me about D and D for myself. Have you what What have you done in D and D? I'm kind of curious. Uh, so I, I used to run a, a few campaigns in D and D in the fourth edition, and uh, um, I'm always sort of experimenting with sort of different systems. So I, I used to be a, an assistant S, ST for the World of Darkness games for their LARPing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to people going around and acting like they're vampires. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I yeah, don't so say blah, blah, blah. It, it, it's kind of funny because, you know, whether you're, you know, People online at the moment trying to think that they're bigger than they are. It's just like, wow, it's just like playing, you know, Vampire the Masquerade. Oh, Everyone thinks I have not played. Person. I have not played that game whatsoever, and it, it's it's a fun game. Though you know, it's not so much of a, you know, oh, I have to defeat this major villain. It's more of oh, this. this uh, my the other guy in my group, he's trying to take over the prince position. Well, I gotta fuck him over now. Mm. 
You know, see, I was told by a friend never to play Vampire the Masquerade because if I played it, I would not last long or I'd TPK. <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch Vampires of the Masquerade. And I always wanted to touch it, but I'm just like, you know what? I really don't want to piss off a group of people. <laughs> But at the same time, that's what you want to do, though, in a game. Yeah, but... Eesh. Ah, man. I just don't want my first uh, first, first game of Vampire's Masquerade is just to TPK everybody. If I were to do that, I would feel horrible, because I, I hear a lot. it's a lot of time to put into character building. Uh, no, it's not too bad. It's actually easier to make a... To, to make uh, a character than, say, D and D. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Because D and D takes me forever. No, it's about like half the time. Unless you're on D and D Beyond. I, I have not yet to play D, the D and D Beyond. Um, character. No, you don't play it. You just make characters. D and D Beyond's great. You make your characters, and if you don't want to buy the full books, you just buy what you want. So, if you wanted to buy a Warforge and you wanted to buy these certain spells, you could buy them for cheap, like a dollar each or whatever. And it's it's really fun. It's it's affordable for those who just want to play selective builds. Yeah, like uh, you know, I, I I do think that you know Critical Role has you know made D and D sort of popular again. Oh yeah, the, I play their custom class Blood Hunter all the time. Uh, I haven't actually tried the the Blood Hunter class. Is it any good? It's really good. It's fun. Um, I wouldn't do the Warlock one. I've played it a little bit. It's not my favorite. It's just um, Blood Hunter with a mix of Warlock, so it's just like, eh, you're not really getting much out of it. I'd suggest doing the Lycanthrope because you could be a were a fucking werebass. You can be whatever were creature you want. So you want to be a were ant, you could be a were ant. You want to be a were a were trout, you could be a were trout. You want to be a were pig, you can be a freaking were pig. What about a were honey badger? That too. If I was DM, I'd give you extra I'd give you plus five and all your strength app. <laughs> strength. Strength rolls. Honey badger don't give a shit. Which is our yep. logo, essentially. <laughs> We are the Fancy Honey Badger podcast. But, uh... Yeah, so... You know, a lot of people have been kind of speculating, you know, if uh, GT may, may come back, or GT storylines may come back in the future for, for Super. What Do you think that GT will come about again? Nope, I don't think it will. I think maybe some characters will, like Oob, because, um... Goku did make that wish, but honestly, I don't see a lot of GT elements coming back because there's no real reason to bring Super Saiyan 4 back. It may be a popular move, uh, uh, transformation, but if it does, it does. I'd like to see how they do it, but with how Super Saiyan uh, God is going, I don't see anything, um, and the pinnacle being anybody can learn Ultra Instinct if they really train and like devote their whole life to it, but... Like seeing all that, and then seeing um, ev- ro- uh, blue evolution, which I call Royal Blue. Um, you yeah, know, I don't see much GT coming back, and a lot of people want to argue with me on that. It's like, oh well, you have so much going for. I'm like, well, Omega Shenron would get fucking trounced by a god. Um, they'd have to rewrite the whole character. Um, there's really no point to bring in the. Uh, Black Star Dragon Balls because with Goku, if they turn Goku into a kid, um, they could Whis it, make Whis turn him back into adult because Whis can do that. Uh, pro- he probably can do it because he's Deus Ex Machina. And um, honestly, crap, Beerus wouldn't want his whole <laughs> his place of food being destroyed. I mean, maybe he wouldn't care, but with the technology that they have, they probably and resources they have, they probably wouldn't have treated it so poorly as they did in the original GT show. Well, given how Akira Toriyama has his um, antics and he loves to uh, screw around and make unneeded um, puns and jokes, um, yeah, I can probably see it going to that point if we're talking about it. 
Yeah, well, there's some elements in, you know, uh, GT that came and super, like, Pilaf and his crew are still mm-hmm. kids. And that was a GT yeah. element. Um, that was explained, um, the canon way that was explained is in the mangas. In the, if you read the manga, is that they made a wish during, um, which is confusing because it makes it feel like in the Cell Saga. I and no, in Future Trunks' timeline, but apparently they became kids during the uh, before Cell came around and Piccolo apparently died, or after that. It, I don't know. It Piccolo died somehow, <laughs> and they actually turned themselves into kids. Gosh, I gotta go. Let me go. And my manga is like really, really in my studio. So I think it was issue manga issue two. <sighs> Let's go and look through. I think, yep. I think it is. Um, yep. Um, future Trunks World. Yeah, this is all in Future Trunks World. Um, apparently, how they became kids is during the fat battle with Android 17 and 18. Um, while when people were dying Bulma and Bulma baby trunks and Gohan went to go find the dragon balls but the peel off gang used the dragon to uh turn themselves into kids so apparently something along those lines happened in the main verse but they never explained it in the main verse but they explained it in the future trunks timeline which is confusing yeah that's very confusing because I know he was a kid and he got turned into a kid because of the wish in GT. Mm-hmm. And seeing, like, that's what I thought. I was like, when did they wish themselves? Like, and when they showed it in the anime, I was like, okay, so please show us how did they turn into kids? When did they summon, summon Shenron? When did this happen? When I saw in the manga, it took me a couple of minutes to really um, think, oh, man, this is Future Trunks timeline. Even though I read it, I, it did not occur to me until I was like, oh, fuck. This is an, a non- canon this is in the non-main universe uh timeline how did the main ones turn into kids stop with these plot holes akira toriyama yeah well like he is what uh vegeta is you know older in the flashbacks with uh the first time that beerus is introduced and then in broly he, uh, he's a lot younger and uh, off planet when the planet is destroyed. <laughs> well, it probably happened like a little bit in between that. I can see that happening. But uh, I can see it happening like a quick, like, oh no, don't hurt father. Like, you are a dick. Um, and like, oh, you got to go to another planet because if you, if your sees you here again, you're going to get killed. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it is. It's kind of mad the way that Akira Toriyama just kind of like, oh yeah, uh, I just forgot to draw a character or fill in this plot See, hole. That's where I'm um a little scared um with what's going to happen when Akira. Oh no, no, not it doesn't make me scared. It makes me curious what happens when Akira Toriyama finally passes, which is going to be a sad time, but um. What's going to happen to Dragon Ball? Like, what's going to happen to the story? It's not going to have his charm to it. I mean, a lot of people I know like Dragon Ball AF. It'll be years because he's so reclusive. Like, he was offered a knighthood in France recently, and he got his publisher to get accepted because he's so reclusive. He is just going to, like, disappear completely. (laughs) Like, we, we, we don't even know if he's alive at this point. We just might have a memoir. I don't know, but it's just for me. It's just like when he it, when he's gone, what's going to happen to the story? Because I know Toybull is his successor, so Toybull got had his um, Dragon Ball AF. It's really popular. I haven't read it yet. I'm about. I have it on my computer right now. I'm going to be reading it sometime in the near future. But I plan maybe to do a manga dub of it. But um, gosh. I just think, what's going to happen? Will Toy be bringing his um, storytelling to it, or will Dragon Ball just die? Uh, I, 
I don't think he'll die. I think, you know, Studio Toy, you know, Dragon Ball makes way too much money. I think it's just going to go on to the whatever the next generation it is. Yeah, maybe maybe at that point people will be listening to the fans and what they want. I mean, I don't expect us getting Super Saiyan 5 or Super Saiyan Watermelon. <laughs> I, I'm trying to picture what a Super Saiyan Watermelon would be. <laughs> Probably like a mixture of like green and then like a, the inner part of the hair is green and then like the outer part's yellow with some like black dots or somewhere like that. It's like, watch me go Super Saiyan Watermelon! Ah, I'm sweet and tasty! <laughs> hey, I'm Goku and I got watermelon hair. I can't eat it because Chi Chi said I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> no, I, I know definitely the studio toy is going to, fo- you know, focus on, you know, keep Dragon Ball going as long as possible, even if uh, uh, they don't continue the series after Kiritani passes, but they'll have like a film every year or second year. Mm. I like what they did with um, got reincarnated as Yamcha. That really hit me in the yes button. Like, if it replaced the muffin button from Team Four Star and make a yes button, that actually like screams yes. That's what Yamcha did to me. It was like yes, this is perfection, perfection beyond belief. Oh God, yes, mm, I need it. Ah, like. That's how I felt because it reminded me of Masako X's um, what if Raditz turned good? What if Nappa turned good? What if Goku married Bulma? Which I actually like that a lot. Um, Like his what if series. It reminded me of that. And I was just like, yes, we need more of this. They need to go and like ask Masako and get like him on a team or something to make this stuff happen because honestly a whole manga dedicated to R&R that's pushed out more I would love it or an anime I would love it I I would buy it like I see that there's a Raditz pop figure right now and I'm just like on the works I'm like hun I am buying it I'm buying 20 so I can fill a bathtub throw myself into it and die from puncture wounds <laughs> <laughs> Like, you don't know how much I really love Raditz. I've loved him since I was a kid. Yeah, I, like, I'm, I always kind of wondered, like, what would have happened if Raditz is the, one of the people that got resurrected. Honestly, I, I feel like that should have happened because Vegeta likes to boast he's the prince of all the saints, but he's the prince of all but four. All what? Uh, Gohan, Goku, um, Trunks, Goten. Bulla, that that's all he's a prince of. Like, come on, you killed Nappa. You could have brought him back. He would have still. You shouldn't even kill Nappa. He would have been a really good. Uh, pl- Turbo pl- exists pl- somewhere, but keeps getting forgotten about. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Raditz, it's just like you guys. They 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 were just like, oh come on, you know Raditz would have just gone with what Vegeta said because you know he's weaker. He would have listened. If, yeah. Go- if Goku killed Frieza and found that out, I was like, oh, well, uh, he wasn't a lower class, of course. I knew he was great. He was the most wonderful brother who killed me for the right reason, the good reason, because I'm a good guy now. Yes, good guy. Ha! Oh, God. You know, and, of, and of course, you know, we can always have the Captain Ginyu to come back because he's technically still alive as a frog. Oh, yeah, Captain Genyu is uh, another one of my favorite characters to do because Captain Genyu just always exists somewhere. He hasn't died. He just exists. He's in the yeah. body of a frog. Well, actually, Maybe he should be the, the new antagonist for Pilaf and his gang. Gosh. Wait, but didn't Genyu um take over to go Tagoma's body? Tagoma? What happened to him? I'm trying to remember. Did he die? Uh, I don't know. Technically he died a few times and then kept coming back when the earth was resurrected. Hmm. 
Um, whatever happened to Genyu, I don't know. He's just, he just exists. But I, I just want the Genyu Force to kind of come back as good guys, just to join the Galactic Patrol. And Jocko just has to, like, it's a whole spinoff series where Jocko has to, like, fight for his rank while Jace, Beta, Rikum, and Galdo are all, like, trying to take the elite spot. Be like, huh, you're just a wimpy, skinny brat. I'm going to be the elite patrolman. No, I, Jace, the red blood is going to be the red, the Galactic Patrol elite. <laughs> no, it only goes to the fastest. I bet it will be the elite of the elite. While Godo's off flipping panties. Yeah, like, uh, like, uh, I, I love the fact that they're, you know, they're still trying to bring back the old Dragon Ball humor and Super. Oh yeah, they're trying. I feel like they forced it a little bit, but yeah, yeah, especially in you know the filler arc with the the copy Vegeta. Mm, yeah, that kind of forced it for me. Or it's a little like, all right, we, we, we get it. This guy has no power, and people are mistaking him that he has power. Mm. Yeah, no, it. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of filler episodes I'm just, I question. Hey, you know, Dragon Ball had the, Dragon Ball Z had the best filler episode where Piccolo and Goku had to drive a car. Exactly, I love that Piccolo and Goku just driving cars. It's like, hey, hey, go, uh, Goku. Yeah, what's up, Piccolo? Let's go drive cars. Yeah, good shit, good shit. Like I was like, hmm, yes, yes. I need more of this. Need more of this. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, what? How would you like actually Dragon Ball to to go off in sort of the the future? Oh gosh, where it is now with uh, Dragon Ball Super with, and I haven't caught up with the moral stuff, but I've heard some things from SS Gokuja, um, where they're bringing Majin Buu back and making him cool again. And I'm like, you know what, buddy Josh Martin, I can't wait until he can voice that because he deserved more. Mm. Mm, I really, I don't know. Like people said, Moro took away the Super Saiyan God power, but I feel like that's temporarily. I heard people have said that Ma- Kid Boo's going to be coming back, and I'm like, you know what? That might bring some good stuff. If it goes on from that, maybe they can find a loophole, and that's Oob. Yeah, that's true. Like they, they say, that, you know, Ultra Instinct is kind of it was a kind of a limited use. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to see w- what they're going to do now, because the only person now that has that level is Vegeta. Because Goku's Ultra Instinct is gone, but Vegeta's was his own. Mm, uh, Vegeta's Royal Blue uh, evolution was just um, it's as strong as Kyle Ken Blue, which is really great because that means Vegeta topped one of Goku's strongest abilities from in Z. At the time, Kyle Ken really screwed his was a really um, pride killer for him. So just to be, I make a form that's stronger than a form that uses Kaio Ken. That's just as strong and be like, huh, I don't need that Kaio fucking Ken. All I need is Royal Blue. Yeah. Which, it was uh, cool. A lot of people don't like it from what I heard, but I like it. Uh, I, I have sort of mixed feelings when it comes to the dub of Dragon Ball at the moment. I heard they called it Autonomous Ultra Instinct, and I really wanted to scream. And I heard uh, someone sent, uh, regrettably sent me the new uh, Ultimate Battle song when I, I was expecting ka 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 I was like, oh, cool. And it's like, fight, fight, fight. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, I think it, it would have been better if they, you know, brought back the Bruce Faulkner. Jonathan group. Young did it. Um, some other musicians did it. Like, get somebody. Like, go to YouTube. Like, there are some talented people. Like, Jonathan Young, I would have loved to heard that going like, ka 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 i would be like, yes! Pumped up fighting! But no, we get, or even Kagi Films. Kagi sung it. 
Kagi sung it. Come on. <laughs> he it would have been perfect. He already did the job for them. <laughs> they could have just asked, like, hey, can we use this for uh super English stuff? Be <laughs> like, go on ahead, guys. I Kagi Films approve this song. He could have done that because, dude, he's shallot. He works, he loves Dragon Ball just as much as we do. Yeah, that that's true. Uh and there's also the fact of uh you know, team. I I know. You know the the DBZ guys don't like uh, abridgers. It, it's it's very well known at this point. But you know, Team Four Star did do the mock up battle during the of the Cell games in Dragon Ball Z Kai. Mhm. And maybe you know, so having you know fan creators in one of the things could be a good sign for the community. <laughs> It, it is good. I honestly feel like companies need to be looking at the fans and see what the fans want. Dragon Ball Z Abridged really brought my love back for Dragon Ball Z. It made me th- see what was wrong, but also made me see why I loved it so much. And the, the way they just did, like, told the jokes and how they just evolved it from memes to, hey, we, we're actually something now. I loved it. I enjoyed it. It was It was awesome. And... I can understand why they they don't like uh, abridgers, but honestly, come on! Like they they gave they made your they gave more to your jobs, and it's fun. It really is fun. It made I don't know how to explain it. It's I don't know if I was in an anime production, I saw that people abridged. I would applaud them because you know what? I was I would have said I was them once. We were them. We were just doing things because we loved it, and we do love it now, but it's more of a full-time job. They, they're they doing it because that's where they want to start, and I'd applaud them for it. Yeah, like, I know a lot of people, you know, become very possessive, especially, you know, when money is involved type of thing. Mm. Like, animation crew, you know, uh, you know, Sean Shemmel as he... He's even against other voice actors that voice Goku in the past. That's very well known as well. I feel like if you don't own a character, if all all it is, um, awesome words that were told to me by a professional is that you're in there just to do a job. That character's cool, and you can be proud of voicing that character, but you don't own that character. You're a voice for it. You're well known for that. If you are that, then cool, but you don't own the character. If if the company, if Toei decided, hey, or if Kira Toriyama said, hey, I don't like that voice actor, somebody would, somebody would lose their job. Yeah. But it's just, I don't know, being possessive is, just, I feel like a lot of voice actors forget the roots and where it comes to being a fun, this is a passion that I can do and not have to stress my whole life wondering how am I going to pay the bills and how am I going to spend time with my family? Because I honestly started voice acting because when I die, I want to leave a footprint, whether it be fan work or professional work, from being a hero, a villain, a zany NPC, or even just a narrator or someone on a commercial. When I die, I want my I want my kids, my wife, or my grandchildren, or even kids from before to go back and be like, look, there's dad, there's grandpa, there's great, 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 great grandpa. Like, that's what I do voice acting for. The fame comes third for me. It's it's my family. I do it for my family. I do it to make friends and be happy. And I I don't really think about it being famous. And I feel that's where a lot of people get to. And when I hear about Sean Schimmel, people say Sean Schimmel gets angry, possessive, doesn't like any other voice actor for it. It's like, you know what? That's his job. No one, he doesn't want anyone taking his job. He enjoys his job, and I can respect that. But going at it about it a different way, I can agree. Yes, that can be done. But yeah, like, ultimately, but you don't honestly, own the character. I ha- only have one voice acting role myself for one project. Uh, I don't, if somewhere down the line, you know, I take on a thing, I wouldn't hate another voice actor for taking the position, you know, after me or. I've been, been replaced. You know, before me. Well, Sh- well Sean Schemmel, I know he has a thing against Peter Clemis. I don't know why. Uh, I was not at that convention at that year. 
It's between them. Stories afterwards. Uh, but you know, it's Akira Toriyama's project that you know his character at the end of the day. You're helping contribute as far as the fan community and spreading that story. And Toei. Goku. Toei owns the characters too. It's just yeah. They just so, voice them. You know, you you just you just voice the guy. You're helping spread the message. Same as Team Four Star. Mm-hmm. It's it's just having fun. You're 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 yeah. inter, you're entertaining um, people. That is our job. Our job is to entertain and create disbelief within fiction, and we got to have fun with it. Because if we don't have fun with it, what's the point? What's the point of being a voice actor? I'm only a voice actor for money. I'm only a voice actor so I can be famous and not have to do a hard job again. Because you know what? Honestly, people need to realize character work doesn't get people famous or a ton of money. It's commercial work. Voice acting is a hard gig. Like People think it's fun and games. It's a passion of mine, yes. But it tires me out because I got to audition for commercials, um, other projects. And it's it's a lot of waiting. A lot of waiting just to get... What, maybe a couple hundred bucks, not even a thousand? Freelancing is hard. And when you hit those big bucks, you can get to that point where it's like, okay, I have this character making me a thousand dollars a month or every other episode, or holy crap, if I lose them, I lose my income. <laughs> I lose everything. Uh, I don't know. Did I just go on a random tangent? I don't know. I do that sometimes. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. <coughs> okay. Yeah, no, sorry about that. I, I just, um, I go on tangents from time to time, but ultimately, I can't, I can't be angry at voice actors for being, not preferring a bridge, not being so keen on the bridgers, or, but I'm also under. I also disagree with how they feel about it because it's like it's agree to disagree thing. It's like I understand, but you know what? Let them have fun because you started in that area too. You 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 started to act because you like acting. You like to entertain. You like to do it because it makes you happy. You don't do one Broadway play as uh, Sweeney Todd and be like, "Oh, only I can do Sweeney Todd. I'm the only singer for it." Uh, freaking actors can't go and be him. I have to be him. It's like. Well, you know what? You're easily replaced just as all of us are. (laughs) We got to take what we can get and just honestly just smile and do what we can because people like the project more if the people behind behind the characters are nice. Yeah. I went on a tangent. I am sorry. I don't even know where how I got to that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, I, I have a point, and then I just kind of keep going, and I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot what I was talking about. Let's just keep going. Yeah! <laughs> let's let's do it! <laughs> oh, shit. How much did I talk? <laughs> hey, the, 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 the podcast, and, you know, just like with any fan creation, I, I don't make money off of this. Uh, right. You know, it, it's all about sort of sharing the message. I kind of got a voice acting on the side see you're just doing this to have fun if you end up making money off of this that's cool that's interesting that that's nice because it helps pay your bills but ultimately you're doing it to have fun you're not going to go to every podcast and be like ha i hate every other podcast but uh, other than mine because i'm the content that people want freak them other guys it's like yeah you know what you got a negative attitude <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm never going to be, you know, the the next Joe Rogan because realistically, I don't have the connections that Joe Rogan does, and I have more hair than him. <laughs> oh man, hair! I'm shaving mine off today. <laughs> I'm realizing my sides of my hair are getting longer, and the top of my head's getting a little like I have thick hair, but I can tell when either if it's just flat. Or if I'm losing hair and I'm gaining a widow's peak, so I'm just like, you know what? I just better start just shaving my head. Uh, see, I'm not losing hair. Mine's just getting slightly gray. The mm. wonders of going in your 30s. I'm 25 and I'm already feeling like I'm balding. 
And you're only as old as you feel. Right? <laughs> and with all these medical issues, I feel like I'm 50. I'm in a lot of pain, but I keep positive. So is there any sort of events that you'd like to go to in the future yourself? Oh, my there? gosh. Ah, oh, gosh. I would love to go to Sayacon. I don't have the money to do that. I really don't. I'd love to go to Sayacon. Um, I'd love to meet my hero. Um, my hero, of course, is Moscow X. He inspired me to be a voice actor. And, oh, well, he's the second person to inspire me to be a voice actor. My wife actually is my biggest inspiration because when she asked me when we first started dating, what do you want to be? I said, a voice actor. Do it. I'm like, what? Do it. And then she started looking up how to be a voice actor and all these other things and uh, helped me look up things. And it's like, okay, let's look at mics. And then I just started looking at mics and talking to her. And then she kind of was like, oh man, he's getting a little too obsessed. Cause I was just like, this mic, this mic, this mic. And she's like, okay, well you find that out. But she's always been the one to tell me go, 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 go. So she's my biggest inspiration. Um, and the Masako X came in uh, when he was in my life, when I, when I, in my life, I mean, as, as a creator who inspired me, I just, always saw him as yes that is what i strive to be he has fun with what he does i need to be that way yeah so i want to have fun uh you know so you know there's tons of people that are aspiring you know voice actors what would be the, the main advice that you'd give them um any person that wants to be a voice actor you're going to get a lot of people telling you what to do and what not to do have fun if you want this to be a career, you're going to start in many ways. That's going to be either accomplishments or the wrong way. And you're going to make some mistakes. If you're going to make a demo reel, look on how to make it, how, what you need to do to do with it. Look up scripts. And I honestly, I honestly say, do what you want to do. Commercial work is where you're going to find voice acting. But if you really want to be a character worker, do it. Don't let anyone tell you not to. I'm going to tell you what you sh- if you want to make money and actually like make this a stable income, go do the commercial work. Have thick skin because you're going to be told no a lot and you're going to be told why you were bad in some of your areas. Some people will tell you the blunt and honest truth and say your line was very dry and it felt like you weren't giving it your all. Or some people honestly tell you utmost it's it's honestly not up to par and it's kind of crappy to listen to. Your audio quality can be a big thing. You just got to do your research and have fun. Don't let those people bring you down because ultimately what you're doing, you're just, you're being fun. I just did a fan dub for Jason Todd in the Red, as J, Jason Todd in the Red Hood um, near the end of the movie. And honestly, I loved it because I always liked that character. And I thought myself when someone told me, oh, that's not professional work. I was like, fuck professional work. I'm doing this to be happy. People like my voice. They want to hear me in other things, even if it's a fandom. Honestly, I get more popular being having fun than being a guy with a stick up my ass and be like, you can't do a demo reel like this. You can't You can't be a voice reactor like this. You have to do it this, 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 and this way. And, and ultimately scaring the new guys. Do what you love to do. Have the drive. If you don't have the drive, don't be a voice actor. If you don't have thick skin, don't be a voice actor. But if you want to prove me wrong, you can prove me wrong. But have fun. I don't know where, how I, I don't, I went everywhere with that. You're talking to a guy who goes everywhere. I'm a bad public speaker. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> uh, is there any sort of projects you, you want to promote? Um, yeah. Um, I would like to promote DB Live Online's uh, Super Dragon Ball Heroes, um, Super Dragon Ball Heroes uh, fandom, where I play Cumber. Um, we dub it and we, we, where we work hard on it. Um, we're also going to be working on other like side fan dubs, like for DC. We're going to be working for uh, do, uh, fan dubbing um, uh, Final Fantasy scenes or anything that the f- fans want us to do. And we're talking about a possibly in a bridge or whatever, but we don't know yet. Um, everything else I really can't talk about. I am planning to do streams every Friday, um, live dub Fridays with the crew. So we all take a random game, either take it very seriously or we we fuck around while reading reading the story just to entertain everybody else cool that that's, uh, that sounds fantastic so you might as well call it end of the day I, it's yeah. probably 
you know, uh, what, 6, 7 o'clock on your side? Uh, it's a 5.58. It's 6, almost 6. Yeah, it's a couple minutes till 6. And it's just coming up to around 11 o'clock on over here. Okay. And on. You should be going to sleep. <laughs> well, if you guys, if anyone wants to follow me, uh, you can find me on Twitter as Lo-Fi Saiyan and casting call Lo-Fi Saiyan. Voices.com is Lo-Fi Saiyan. You'll find my demo reel. And if you're interested in me, come talk to me. I'm setting up my uh, prices to actually put up, but come ask me about my prices and we can negotiate anything. Cool. That sounds fantastic, man. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for having me on. I really enjoyed uh, being here. And, you know, you're, you're welcome anytime back, man. Awesome. Cool. Just, yeah, no, definitely. Whenever you have, like, um, more time to have me on, I'd love to do it with uh, Gokuja and uh, and Insanes. Like, I know them I know them a little bit. Um, Gokuja, I'm known a little bit more personally, but I, lo- I love them both. They're really great people, and they're awesome to talk to. Cool. Uh, yeah. And until next time, man. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you until next time. And this is Geek Era Podcast. Remember, we're on uh, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, and anywhere you can find a podcast. I own it.